customer brings a car in and it's got a, a drivability problem, may not even have a trouble code. What do you do? What approach to diagnostics do you make? Where do you begin? Air, fire, or fuel, it's one of the three. You may not have a code, you may have a code, it may be pressure, it may be a sensor engine management situation. So you know, that's, one, that's one, of those, one of those critical things of you know, understanding how systems work. How do you diagnose bad fuel pumps? Fuel pumps go bad, how, they go bad again. You get a third pump, it's probably not the pump. How do you determine what the root cause is? Some of the things we, we talk about in our advanced fuel class is not only using a fuel pressure gauge, obvious, no-brainer, that's the biggest tool you're gonna use, but you're also gonna use everything from an ammeter to a lab scope. Diagnosing fuel pumps, diagnosing the waveform of injectors, determining if the injector's turning on at the right time, and that goes from the regular sequential fuel injector to the higher voltage direct gas direct injection injectors. Uh, using tools to tap into the relays, fuse buddies and so forth, to be able to get a hold of that line that supplies power to that fuel pump, do voltage drop tests across fuel pump relays. There are so many things that technicians tend to forget and just throw a fuel pump on the car. And in reality, the fuel pump may fix it for a while and then we write back and it's a root cause of some circuit issue or a fuel control or fuel management problem that needs to be addressed to begin with. A lot of guys get so focused on the symptom that they don't do that initial check of system voltage and grounds and so forth. So information they read on their scan tool can be incorrect and they don't realize it. The symptoms produced on the vehicle can be ghost symptoms or fictitious symptoms and you're gonna start running down a path that you think is, is causing this symptom and then you're gonna get there and you're gonna, wait a minute, this data doesn't make sense for the symptom I'm seeing. We've seen a quantum leap in technology changes in the last 20 years, and it's just doubled within the last five to 10. Onboard Diagnostics 2, OBD2, it's not done evolving. It's gonna keep evolving. We've got gas direct injection now, a completely different animal with a high pressure side and a low pressure side of the system, just like a diesel. And these are things you need to be working on in your shop with the utmost knowledge on the diagnostic, not just silver bullets, but also theory of why they work the way they do, and that'll help you figure out why they break the way they break. So you, so you don't waste time, energy, and effort uh, you know, diagnosing down the wrong path. In this class, we're gonna address the best approach to make the most use of your tools and the least amount of time in diagnostics to get you the best result, and that's an accurate diagnosis that fixes a car the first time and doesn't come back for the same problem.